Well, joining me on Motor City Beat is a couple of original members from the old Brownsville Station Band. We've got Henry H. Bomb Wet. Hello, how are you doing, Doug? I am doing good, and welcome back to the Motor City. Thank and you. Michael Lutz as well. Hey, awesome. Michael, it's great to have you in here. I know you've done a lot of different projects over the years, playing with Ted Nugent, producing local bands. But uh, you and Henry back together with Brownsville Station, yeah, the man. original band. Yep. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, man. It the, feels great. You know, going back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're in here. Brownsville, Texas with naked women running around, you know, Actually, whatever. many scenes. Yeah. Detroit's one of them. And of course, uh, everybody remembers is the band with none other than Cub Coda, of course, heading up that group for uh, so many years and right from the beginning, obviously, and uh, passed away in 2000. Yep, July 2nd, I yep. think. So it's yeah, been we a miss while. him. You know, he did. He was with us the whole time, man. You know, we'd have we'd be doing something, and uh, when we had gone through our archival tapes, um, we used to, when we'd rehearse. We'd get fed up with rehearsing a song or whatever, and we'd go into these comedy routines. Yeah. And we ran across so many of them from, from the years past. And we'd have our cubisms, like, you know, the tagline to the, the, the punchline might be, and here I am, Mr. Dillon. And we'd be looking at each other, you know, we'd think, well, is this really going to work in one of our new songs, you uh -huh. know? And we'd, we'd say, would Cub dig this? And if Cub would dig it, we'd say, Yep. And here I am, Mr. Dillon, you know. that. Yeah, and you know what, jumping a little bit ahead, but I did get a chance to listen to some of this new material, and that's exactly what I was saying to you guys. I can I can hear some of those cubisms in there, Brownsville Station-esque rock and roll. Yep. And I have to say, man, thumbs up 100% on this new material, and we're all going to get a chance to hear it here in just a couple of minutes. But uh, this is some really good stuff. How long have you been working on this? It's been... Intensely on the th the thirteen songs we have on this right now, we've been it's been a year, but it actually started a year and a half ago and evolved into it. Yeah, definitely evolved. We we just we got together doing archival stuff. We went through about five hundred and fifty hours of tape. Unbelievable. Now, was know? that looking for something to put together as a yeah, you know uh, like a retrospective yeah, we would call album a legacy, or something? Yeah, a legacy, legacy project. stuff. Okay, hundreds of like you said, five hundred plus hours on eight track, two track, four track, sixteen track, and we just started baking the tapes, the ones that needed baking, oh, and wow. transferring them to yeah. Pro Tools. Yep, and then uh, actually, well, you know, one trip up. Shortness when one trip up uh, after we worked our 10 hour day, we popped a couple beers and I said to Michael, you know, I got this melody and a hook line that's driving me nuts. And I sang it to him, and he jumped on the piano, and he starts whipping out this, this melody to go along with it, these chords. Then he gets on the guitar, and next thing you know, we wrote our first song together since 1979. Wow. And internet, and that's on, so that's, so on that's the record. kind of how the whole thing came yeah. about yeah. of putting the band uh, yeah. back yeah, together. All, all of a sudden, we put the art, the legacy stuff on hold. It's still not done. The legacy stuff. Yeah. We said, "This is way too good to be true, man." I mean, it was like falling off a log again. Totally Brownsville. And you know what helped, Doug? We went through all that archival stuff on old songs and everything, and it re-Brownsvilleized us. Okay, all right. You yeah, know, we got, I mean, well, it really I did. Tell, yeah. It got the humor, so, it, got, it got that I, feeling right back there. You know what? I, I mean, you know, we always did. This is what Brownsville Station is. We make drinking better. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and I'll tell you, we've got some drinking songs on here, too. You're damn right. There are some really good yeah, ones. Well, like, my friend Jack's a good start. <laughs> yeah. Rock and roll is better than music. I mean, uh, that is fantastic. And uh, some of the video footage that I've already seen, I, I was really, really impressed with how you guys came across and, and looked in the band. Now, you've added a couple of new members as well. Right, right, yeah. That that would be uh, Andy Paddlin and Billy Craig. Okay, so um, a couple of guys who are well known in Detroit for being in a lot of great bands. You bet. Yep, you bet. And uh, you've got your studio in Ann Arbor, right, Michael? Yes. The, yep. Yep. Ta Tasmanian studio. Tasmania. Tasmania <laughs> Inc. Man. And uh, you know? well, I got to tell you, with the uh, quality of players. And the quality of the of the production, uh, this has really turned out to be uh, even something uh, bigger and better than than I thought it was when you guys first you know mentioned it to me. I Thank I didn't you. know what to expect to tell you the truth because you know uh, no disrespect but you know I've always thought of 
uh, Brownsville Station as as Cub Coda, but in listening to the pieces and the way you've put it all together uh, and the way it has come across and sounds, you can tell just how much of a part of the band. I mean, obviously, well, you guys really were, you know, uh, we uh, were an entire that, unit. That means a lot. You know, yeah, we were two time. thirds of the band. And uh, you heard Michael singing. Yeah. Uh, actually, Brownsville Station was always a two singer band. And you know what? I didn't ever really kind of correlate that until I started hearing you singing on this. And I'm going, well, it sounds like some of the same stuff I've heard from the 1970 yeah, exactly. recordings. Right. Yeah, exactly right. So, you know, some of our some of our uh, biggest singles, other than well, other than Smoke and what. Um, Kings of the Party. Absolutely. You, yep. Kings of the Party, you you know, that was... Uh, well, there that you was, go. We had, what, that we was had me six, on vocals. We, yeah, we had six top 50 hits, and yep. that, was, that was one of them. Yeah, so you know that what? is amazing. It should be, it's illegal for guys our age to be this excited. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I know. You know <laughs> it, it is. I, I it's illegal. I told my wife, I said, you know, I feel like I'm... It's like Michael and I are 16, and we're in our first band. Let's go get some T-shirts made, man. <laughs> you know, I think that that's when... Um, that's when music is, uh, well, that's when the music comes out the best. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. When, when, you're, when you're feeling it, when you're passionate about it, when you've got that excitement all over again, I mean, there, nothing can stop that. Yeah, they, honest to God, Doug, we feel like kids, man. And, you know, you can, anybody that hears the new CD will, will recognize that we still sound young. Now, That's what the one of the biggest responses we've been getting. You guys sound so young. Yeah, I mean, it really does sound timeless. I mean, it sounds like Brownsville Station. That's Amen. what's so Amen. awesome about it. Dominus Nabisco. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Another Cubism. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we were on the road for, what, 10 years together. Oh, so a God. lot of that rubs off. 250. Obviously. What did we do one year? 300? 327 one-nighters in, seven, in 74. And... Did the follow-up record to the smoking record during that? Yeah, year. Oh, follow-up, okay. the follow-up um, LP. Well, the showmanship, you know. Now, when you go back and and you really think about it, the showmanship of all of you guys on stage, especially, excuse me, the H bomb. Thank you. Uh, Thank you know, with uh, the signature drum set and the moves and uh, just the antics that went on stage. I remember seeing Brownsville Station and going, "My God, there is so much going on stage right now." Because at the time when you guys came out, you know. Most people were standing in one spot, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of uh, looking overly cool. And all of a sudden, you guys came out. It was like a rock and roll circus on stage, you know, with the outfits and the music and the up tempo ness of the entire show. And smiles, yeah, and smiles, and big yeah. smiles. Yeah. yeah. What are the plans now, uh, uh, Henry and Michael? What What are you going to do with this uh, now that you've kind of, you know, unleashed the beast? I mean, are uh, the plans to put out the record, obviously, but are you going to be playing around town, touring? We're uh, going to be touring. We're okay. going to we're going to light up the rock and roll world in 2012 and 2013. It's coming. We got a lot of things to that we want yeah, to all roll obviously. out at once. We we will have the Facebook. We'll have the official website, and mm -hmm. everything you know is is aimed to hit at one time. All right. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it, and I have to tell you, I was just totally impressed by uh, the new material. I, I really think you guys have captured something again that, uh, you know, a lot of people might have shelved this thing, you know, after Cubs passing back in 2000 and, and never brought it up again. And, and the fact that somehow you've, un, uh, you know, just dug all this out and it, it's just fantastic. How long did it take you to work on 13 new songs? I mean, uh, it went pretty quick, Doug. Um, once we, you know, we had written that first song and we... It literally chucked the idea of trying to work on two projects at once, the legacy stuff or the new. We decided, okay, we're here. We're going to do the new. Okay. And we the, work with, you know, with technology, you know. I don't live right now in Ann Arbor. Uh, I live in Memphis. But with, with the Internet, with Skype, yep. with yep. all this, we're writing yep. songs back and forth. We both have Pro Tools. We're able to send files back and forth. And with him coming up a couple of weeks at a time and everything, it went pretty quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you consider, you know, I mean, not calendar time but time time it went really quick man and you know uh i i have to give you guys credit too because when you do a digital recording like that occasionally and sometimes it just comes out thin it doesn't come out uh it doesn't come out sounding like like an original brownsville station analog big thick you know, uh, sound recording, right on. and this does. This yeah. just has that feel to it. Hey, we've been doing this a while. Both, both <laughs> me. Now you mentioned, you know, my pro 
production and everything like that. And Henry um, mm-hmm. has been a producer from way back, did Blackfoot stuff and Strikes and Train Train and, and all of that oh, stuff. So you so, did all the Ricky Medlock stuff then, eh? I with sure uh, did. Yeah, and working albums. with Al Nally? <clears throat> no, Al Nally, no. <laughs> Al Nally did say, it with me. Say the sequel yeah. and divide $100 oh, I love yourself. Al Nally. Are you kidding yeah. me? He's yeah. one of the That's best. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I did uh, th- three albums for ATCO. Wow. Stateside, and then one uh, with the Stones Mobile all over the UK and actually Switzerland and France and uh, some in Belgium. Uh, so, you know, yeah. the, the so ears we, were yeah. there. The ears were there, and then we brought in our our good friend uh, Tim, Tim Paddle. Paddle and from, yeah, from, oh, Tim, of course. Yeah, so, he's no, great as well. Yeah. yeah, he's... He's the greatest. Boy, I love that guy. I, you know, I love the whole Paddle and family, but Tim, Tim is... Uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to say a guarded secret, but, you know, in the big picture of things, he's a pretty well-kept yeah. secret. Yeah, he takes yeah. a low profile, but we sing his praises on this show a lot because he's involved with so many different bands yeah, all the bet. time. You, you bet. Know? He's and, just, it's just super talent. But yeah. let me just say to uh, all the fans out there as well on Motor City Beat, uh, but to Michael Lutz's credit, okay, there is one song and one piece of production that he did that stands out above Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And that would be... And we're talking about Fred Bear. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know it or not, but this is the man who produced the song for Ted Nugent, Fred I Bear. I confess I made the mess. On, the, <laughs> on that little cassette <laughs> that Ted was selling at his hunting store when I picked it up. That's right. And wow. then took it to WLLZ and bust that bad boy loose. Yep. And, uh, well, like they say, the rest is history because that still to this day is his biggest song oh, in, yeah. in town. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. It still is. There's no question. I mean, we love them all, but but that one still is the most requested by everybody. So is that right? Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Henry Weck, eight Mr. H bomb himself. <laughs> Michael Mr. Mr. H bomb Weck. He's loose in the pocket and right in, in the, the socket. socket. You know? Michael Lutz, uh, congratulations. I know Cub is looking down Amen. on this, going, "Go for it, boys. Amen. Go for it." You yeah, know? man. He oh, is. you know he would. He's smiling. He would definitely. This is a good be, record. Yeah. This is. You know what? This is a good record. Thank you. Congratulations.